This episode is with Robert Burns, a football player at the University of Connecticut, where he's currently completing a master's in business administration. Robert also has a background in music production. Thank you for being here and hope you enjoy this episode. How you doing, man? I'm doing that sweater and i wear that like every other day i need to stop wearing this one yes <laughs> bro this is I've, I've had this one since they gave it to us and it's just it's it's good man it's 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 like comfortable it's uh like light i swear to work out whatever it is man i'm rocking exactly. all the time so bro what, what, what where are you right now like are you in mexico miami what i'm in i'm in miami right now nice nice what why, why are you yeah. still in miami um, what do you, what do you mean? Like, 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 what are you up to, Mike? Cause I, didn't you graduate? I graduated in December. You graduated in December? Yeah. What year were you? Uh, I came in January of 2019. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Well, well, bro, we can talk about that later. I don't know. It's your flow. Tell, tell me what the ordeal. Hey, it's just, it's just, like, it, we're just talking, man. <laughs> yeah, we can okay. talk about it. Is this, is this being recorded? Like, did we start already or no? Yeah, yeah. I, I recorded the whole time. And then later, if I just want to edit something, I edit it. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. How, how do you do yours? Like, how do you do yours? Is it different? Is it a different setup? Uh, it, it's, so I have my little mic here. But the thing is, I don't know how to, like, connect it with Zoom and, like, so like I, I I record with this mic, but then I do this editing process called uh, like like normalizing the volume, so it sounds yeah. normal. So when I'm actually recording, usually I can't hear myself. Like you can hear yourself right now, right? No, I can't. I I don't I don't do that. I don't think I can do that over Zoom. Oh, see, so yeah, see, so yeah, I don't I don't hear myself either. But I can hear myself in post, and like I can look at the waves and see that like it's recording fine. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think the biggest thing about recording and hearing yourself is, or at least from what I've heard, is that it helps you not talk over the other person. Because the way it works is you will hear the other person and then you'll hear yourself. And if you talk over them, you'll hear the overlap of the voices and it sounds weird. And you're like, okay, I got to stop talking. No, 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 I believe that. I believe that. Bro, so, something else that, I, that I'm looking into is uh, there's this software called riverside fm have you heard of that i've seen youtube ads yeah yeah you i mean you probably get the ads because you're they know you're a podcaster i'm, yeah. a, I'm a big <laughs> believer that you know big brother is watching us out there but oh, yeah, um, man. bro it, it looks really really good uh because again like i said before i kind of you know i've done the zoom thing it didn't really work out for me i didn't really you know care for it too much but i played around with like the free options of riverside and i think it's worth the investment I do. And this is not, so? a, this is not a promo. <laughs> they didn't pay me to say this. I mean, I mean, that's up to you. I I, I think I like the way I'm, I'm doing mine right now. So I, the, what I saw from the ads on Riverside, you can tell me if it's different or not, is that it, it's kind of like, so you have this software, this platform, I guess, where you record both your audio and your video. And then um, I think it kind of neutralizes, like you said, the the voices kind of to level them and it doesn't have spikes and stuff like that. I think it does that for you. Um, at least that's what I saw in the ad. I don't know too much yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think so. It just normalizes the volume. And then um, like you said, it records separately. So like there's recording for like all the video, recording for all the audio. And then I think the best thing is that you get to edit everything right there. Okay. Yeah. See, I use I use um, Premiere Pro. Oh, um, you're thinking, bro. No, but but it's because I I put up videos, so, or like I put up a uh, YouTube video as well as the audio only version on like podcasting platforms. So I'll put out um, again this this recording. What I what I do is I have. I don't know if you've seen any other, like... Uh, so, so, so I've seen the one with, with Will Huggins. I've heard a little bit of the one with Dill Boss. I actually did met you, did you, Boss. Well, Sorry, just let me ask real quick. Did you see it on YouTube or did you just hear it? No, I saw it, uh, the, the Instagram clips that you had. Okay, okay. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. He had like cool template, the the red stuff going on. Yeah. So the way I do it is like that. So for TikTok, for Instagram reels, for all that stuff, you probably do that too. You kind of have to edit it so that it looks, or at least I do, so it looks like zoomed in. Because if not, you know, sometimes you'll be scrolling through these videos and it's just like the whole vertical, the aspect ratio of a phone, right? So you have your phone and then the video will literally look like that. Do you see your reflection? Yes. So it'll look like that. And what I do is I zoom it in so that you can have the whole screen. Ah, see, yeah, yeah. See, see, that's one of the things I like about Riverside is uh, it doesn't necessarily put, you know, one person into the full screen, but it gives you the option to kind of stack it. You know what I mean? So like I will be at the bottom of the screen, you will be at the top and it will still take up the 16 by nine. Yeah. I've yeah. seen your, your, your clips on, from your podcast, from your podcast, those are stacked. I've seen exactly. like what you do and I've seen with like the captions and that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Well, bro, that's all Instagram, bro. Again, like I'm not a premier pro wizard, but Instagram has a little captions option and I just let Instagram do its thing. I didn't even know you could do that on Instagram. Bro. Yes. Next time you go to Instagram, upload, try it out with any video. There's these little stickers at the top and you, instead of clicking like an actual sticker, you get to click the, it's going to say CC and it's all the captions and they have options. Like the, it's not just that kind of uh, visual. There's like probably three other or two other options. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I might have to try it because uh, it looks pretty cool on your, on your, on your reels. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. And so, like I said, so, for YouTube, if you ever go on YouTube and look at one of the videos, um, what I do is s similar to the clips that I get from each episode. Uh, what I do is that same red kind of outline that you see. Um, it's a lot more detailed in the actual YouTube video, just because I have more space. Mm -hmm. And 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 the in the clip, it's zoomed in, like I said, so you only see like maybe half of the name. In the actual YouTube video, you see everything because it's made for that YouTube. type of screen. Okay. And so I'll have, um, you know, like the social media in the bottom. I'll have your name, my name, what each person's like, I guess, field is in. Top left corner, I'll have episode number and the topics being, dis being discussed. I'll have uh, different things in like the whole template. So it's not just to... Uh, to cameras recording in the video like you have you see the it's more detailed than that so it's more appealing to the viewer you know for sure for sure for sure that makes sense bro I, again i feel like it's all just about child and error you know just trying it out seeing what what you like seeing what works and you know you take little bits and pieces as you go yeah like that was uh the, the template was made in photoshop you remember zach smith zach smith zach smith he uh play, he played with us. Yes, 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 yes. He's really good at Photoshop. Yeah, so like, he's he, really he does like a yeah, yeah, he does like digital marketing and digital design. I'm not sure if it's marketing, I think it's just digital uh work and artwork. And so he's really good with Photoshop and he's done a lot of my um like artwork for the podcast. Um, you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk to him and he'll help me out with that. So he made the template and it's done in Photoshop. And then I just import that into Premiere Pro. And then the editing I do myself because in, in school, one of my minors is motion pictures and I've done a bit of filmmaking. So I know how to edit. Wow. And so I do it over there. But then yeah. for the but then for the podcast version, like the audio only version, it's really like very easy. Cause after I just finished editing from Premiere Pro, I export that video and then I also just export the audio. And then the audio just goes into all the podcast like platforms. See that that might be a smoother way of doing it. I like that because you kind of just get it all at one go. See, I kind of work backwards, which is probably not a good thing because I to get my audio, I use Anchor. Have you heard of Anchor? Yeah. So so Anchor is like uh, pretty much like a platform that allows you to upload any audio. And it distributes it for you automatically, like to Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever they, they're able to host a podcast. And for there, like, you know, you want to have like an intro, like, oh, this is my guest, blah, 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 or like an outro. Uh, I kind of do all my editing there. But 
it seems like what you're saying is once you edit it for the video, like it's, it's done pretty much. You just take the audio as is, upload it. Yeah, exactly. I like that. I'm, I'm going to check it out. I feel like it's a one-stop shop. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's um, once you finish editing your movie, your project and the editing in the Premiere Pro software, you just, um, you can choose how to export it. You can export the, like the, whole video and audio you can just export the audio you can change the settings to change the uh the aspect ratio so whether you want it like wider you know more narrow all that stuff and also on premiere pro i do like the tiktok clips and the you and the instagram clips i'll have a different sort of setup where i i'll take you know the best parts or the parts that i want to share from the episode i'll just cut them add some other audio underneath it and download that. And then that's what I upload. But I think people don't realize, bro. It's, it's, it's work, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's not like, Hey, I'm just going to go talk to my friends today. It's kind of like you got a plan and you, a lot of editing that goes involved. It's a process, bro. It's a process. Yeah. But, but the thing is, and it, it would be a lot easier. I've considered it because it's a lot, I think the time investment would be a lot, a lot like lower or less. Uh, but I've considered just doing like the audio and no YouTube just because the whole uh, video editing is what takes the majority of my time. And then exporting it takes a while for to export it to my computer. But if I just had to edit the audio, it takes a little like quite a bit less. But I, I think the YouTube is a cool idea as well, just because whenever I watch a podcast or I watch a talking talk show or whatever, I like to have people on there, like on my phone, sometimes just seeing as they speak. At least that's just me. No, oh, no, a thousand percent. Like, like, like I get the idea of, uh, you know, listening to it in your car. You're, you're, you're kind of driving. You're not really worried about, I guess, the facial expressions or things like that. But as a producer, I think it really drives home the, the story, whatever you're, you're telling, whatever you're talking about. Um, and I feel like you, I feel like you have to do visuals nowadays, bro. They, in, in the music business, um, I studied music business um, my last year in Miami. And one of the things that we kind of talk about is how in today's era, a song is not finished. Like it is not done being distributed until there's a music video to accompany uh, that song. It's just that the era that we live in, bro, like you have to have the visuals. And I think it gives you the chance to grow and reach a, a wider audience much easier. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think YouTube is probably the most watched video platform, like more than TV, Netflix, whatever in the world. I would Do you think TikTok is up there? I would have to imagine that. Yeah, but I think just for, for actual um not so much like i think i think tiktoks would fall more into the category of social media rather than like um video production and 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 uh and video like output it's so it, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't you know consider I mean? youtube uh, a social media platform tiktok i said you wouldn't consider youtube to be a social media platform i don't think so no okay yeah yeah. I think I think YouTube is more of a, like I said, of a, an outlet to for content producers to put stuff out there and to provide more entertainment more so because I mean you can find I guess some sorts of entertainment in TikTok, on TikTok on Twitter on Instagram whatever but I guess more in depth video production tends to be present in YouTube more than in, in these other platforms. Sometimes, like, I don't know, I've seen some TikToks that are very good quality and pretty cool. Like some of these wildlife um, videos, I don't know if you've seen them, where they, like, go out oh, and shoot wildlife. Yeah. It looks really cool. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's always the case. I just feel that YouTube is more in the market of Netflix, Hulu, um, Disney Plus, more so than in like, TikTok sure. and For Instagram sure. and all that stuff. For sure. Are, like, like, are there any YouTubers that you follow or no? Yeah, I watch I watch a couple. Um, I like to watch a lot of traveling kind of vlogs. Uh, not yeah, not so, couples, right? Because my, my girl is all about the couple vlogs. No, I don't know any couple vlogs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I follow 
uh, some some YouTubers. I follow some in sp- that that are um, Mexican. Okay. And so it's in Spanish, and then I I watch a lot of also these some some YouTubers um, kind of focus their 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 or I guess their their theme their idea is to show different foods from different places when they travel so it's true so the travel blog but it's also like an eating and food blog bro i love that man uh, the, don't, don't share me the the, the channel because I, I can get lost in youtube <laughs> I, I honestly bro i'm a big fan of youtube uh the more i learn about it the more i want to like invest my time and energy into that space it's kind of one of the the spaces that like i'm like man if only i can go back in time and realize how big youtube is and, and how big it would become you know because i want to say when we we're in high school like not that there weren't youtubers i don't know how cool it was to be a youtuber it was kind of like ah you know what i mean like there were there weren't really many around fast forward what i don't know seven eight years later i feel like everyone wants to be a youtuber now yeah it's it's definitely grown it's 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 in a different public view now i think people look at it differently now like you said it's um it's different to what it was but when i was when i was a kid i still remember like i i wanted to i tried doing different youtube channels and trying them out and so i I still thought it was pretty cool to do it Um, i would watch i think at the time when i well at least when i was maybe eight ten you know, these big channels, it was like Smosh. It was, um, uh, which other ones? I mean, PewDiePie. PewDiePie's always been big. Okay, he's so big. Yeah, yeah, but not, I don't think he's that big anymore. I mean, he's pretty no. big, but I don't think, I, I'm pretty nah, he's sure. He's pretty big, bro. Did you, did you ever watch, um, the, the, there's another, there was a guy who used to vlog. I think his name is Casey, right? Casey Neistat. Yes, yes, yes. Did you ever watch his videos or not? I watched maybe a couple. I never really got into his channel too much. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. like trash. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm saying you're saying trash content, Casey. I mean, I, I no, no. I just, I just, I don't know. Because a big part of a big part of like whether I like a channel or not is if I can, uh, kind of. If if I like the person doing the videos, okay. it's not that I dislike Casey or anything, <laughs> you know. But just some people like I don't know. It's like oh, like this guy seems cool, you know what I mean? Right, right. And some other people, he's like, oh, I mean, this guy, it's all right, but it's not as maybe the cool as this other guy. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. No, for sure. So for sure. I mean, I don't. I, I know you said not to tell you this YouTube channel, but. I'm going to have to just because it's a, like it's an example of this. Okay, I, w- I won't say it if you don't want no, no, to. But tell, me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I right. want to know. It's just I don't think my girlfriend wants me to know because that means yeah. this less time with her. You know what I mean? I don't think my schoolwork <laughs> wants me to know because it's enough. like, you know, studying. But tell yeah. me. I mean, maybe you've, seen, maybe you've seen him on TikTok. He's called Mark Weens. Um, mm-hmm. And so I started watching his channel probably like, I want to say maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And he, he had maybe, I don't even remember. I, I, he wasn't that big. And now, like, he's been putting stuff on TikTok and, and stuff like that. And I've seen it on TikTok. Now he's got like 8 million followers, subscribers. And so um, he, he travels and he does these food blogs and, and, and tries all these different types of food. But it's just his, ener- like his energy and his attitude. He just brings good like energy with him. And so it's not only about the vlog itself and it's interesting and it's cool, like what he does in the vlog, but it's also, energy. Hey, I like the guy, the guy seems uh-huh. like a cool person to hang out with. So I want to watch his stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I can definitely see that, bro. I can definitely so that's see a big that. part of, you know, whether or not I tend to like a YouTube channel or not. And it's not that I don't like, you know, the Casey or the YouTubers, I don't really like that much. It's just, I it didn't appeal me as much as other channels did. For sure. For sure. For sure. A hundred percent. hundred percent. So you, I mean, you, you did music back in Miami. Are you doing music at, at UConn? 
Bro, as much as I can, bro, as much as I can, man. It's just one of those things where it's more of an outlet more than anything, you know. It's, it's what I do when I have that extra, you know, free time, if I'm not with my girlfriend. Uh, but what I do when I have that extra free time, you know, when I'm stressed or when I'm anxious about something, I use Logic Pro a lot. Um, you know, I recently started learning, you know, Ableton. Uh, and I just I just load it up and I just start clicking away. And next thing you know, I'm on my mic and it's hour passes and I just feel better. You know, I, I try to do something musical, you know, if not every day, every other day, something musical. Yeah. So I my major is business technology. I don't I'm not a huge fan of it. I mean, I don't you know, I think there's cooler stuff out there. I thought it was going to be better than it is. And so you know, going in, in, in the future, you know, having to look for a job and stuff like that. I still want to be able to explore different things to see what I actually really enjoy doing, because whatever it is I want to work in, or I'm going to work in, in the future for the long term, I don't want it to be something that I'm half okay with. I want to really enjoy it just because when you really enjoy something, you're willing to put in so much more time, so much more effort. And that's just going to help you be that more, that much more successful if you're willing to do that. And so I don't really want to like work in something that I'm not a big fan of. And so I, I want to try new things. One of the things that I wanted to try was music production. Yes. And so I, I like electronic music and I tried, I downloaded the free trial of Logic Pro and started playing around with it. Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> Bro, don't let it intimidate you, bro. I think it's just like anything, you know, starting a podcast at first can be a little uh, complicated. But bro, YouTube is your best friend, bro. Uh, I want to say YouTube is like the second largest search engine in the world, you know, probably behind Google or something. Bro, you can literally just type in, you know, how to produce music like you say like EDM or let's say how to produce music like Avicii or, you know, how to produce music like Kygo, like Whoever those, you know, artists that you like, you can literally just type in how to and it'll show you the way. One of the best producers that I know to this day was actually a former long snapper from the University of Miami. Really? Do you know what I'm talking about? I no. I think I think you were maybe like one or maybe two years uh late, but uh there's there's a guy named Sam York amazing guy uh you know amazing producer better person but he literally i watched him develop and like maybe the last it was like what three years he started off very simple you know just hi hats uh you know kicks on the floor it's very very simple music and then like a year two years later bro he's like i don't know he's like really really doing it uh, today, I think he just got signed with like, you know, an agent to start shopping his music around for EDM because EDM works a lot different than per se, you know, hip hop or pop. It's one of those kind of uh, industries where, for example, in hip hop, you maybe, you know, shop, you know, an album or like, you know, come up with a mixtape or a couple singles here and there. But in EDM music, you literally get signed to like a record label for one song distribution sometimes, you know what I mean? And so he just got with an agent to start shopping his music around, but he literally just started with, you know, Ableton, the free student version. Yeah, I was looking, um, I was looking at different YouTube videos, but it starts to talk about music theory and it starts to get complicated. And I'm like, man, I don't know all this stuff. Like I, it's I don't know if I'm it's intimidating like I said and I'm not sure to what point I really want to start to dive deep because the more I started looking into it like the more came up I was like this never ends <laughs> uh, no no and it never ends no it really doesn't but again bro it's I think it's the best outlet in the world Let, let's say you know tough day at practice or tough exam or you know family problems like bro like I, I put on these these things right here and I'm good. You know what I mean? Like it's it's I think it's a skill that everyone should like be able to do the basics on. I really do. Yeah. Really yeah. Do. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just have to because at, at first I also think at the beginning it's probably more boring when you're learning all the basics. 
Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And, and I think it's also like anything where when you you aren't as familiar, you don't really know the language as much, like you're less likely to like want to play that game. You know, like like I feel like as kids, like we tend to play the games and the sports that we were like naturally like inclined to be good at, you know what I mean? And maybe like when it comes to this, it's like, ah, oh, like this is something that I'm just not naturally inclined to it. So like maybe there's a little more resistance, but bro, once you break through that wall, like, bro, I, I don't think you'll ever stop <laughs> trying to produce it. Once you break through the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, I'll have to see, I'll have to, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. So I'll, I'll have to keep looking into it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's definitely something, it's a field that it's, that's very interesting. What, what do you think you're, you're going to do with uh, business technology? Like, like as of right now, like, like tomorrow you have to, you know, go find a job. Like what would it be? Yeah. Well, I'm probably going to go into, um, like you said, that industry, just because that's what I majored in and I have to live off of something, you know? So um I'll probably look into jobs in cybersecurity, maybe some sort of software development. Are you joining me? Are, are you joining the army? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't join them. I'm, I, don't, I, I don't think I can even join the army because I'm from Mexico. Uh, uh, that's the play right there. <laughs> that's the play. <laughs> that's the play, man. But no, so I prob- because I get a lot of like those messages like, oh, like come join the army, like cybersecurity. And like, apparently they have like tons and tons of jobs <laughs> available yeah. at all times. They're always hiring, bro. So. <laughs> I don't know, but c- cybersecurity pays well. And while I figure out, you know, everything and, and just what you know what I enjoy more and stuff like that, it's a good way to earn a living, you know. For sure. For sure. Yeah, so that's that's the plan right now, but we'll see. Um, I'll start looking for jobs, I mean, in these upcoming months. For sure. Yeah, because I'll be done, and then and then I have to, I have to find something. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay here in Miami or if I'm going to go somewhere else. I still have to see that, like w- see what the plan is. But I don't know. I'm open. I'm open to different possibilities. Hey, go go to the Northeast if if, if you're still you know experimenting, trying places out. It, I mean, where where exactly? Okay, so Connecticut, I think is near i want to say new york right yes yeah so is it to to the east to the west north south ah so i'm really bad at geography but from as i understand it uh connecticut is right above um new york so it kind of goes new york connecticut and then boston is above connecticut and then to the east of connecticut is uh like rhode island so like like the northeast is like very very like interconnected like bro like we can drive you know two hours you know southwest and be in new york i can drive two hours northeast and be in boston like it's you know what i mean everything is really connected yeah do you like it there i do man i do man um this past season you know it was i, I think i mentioned in a, you know one of my podcasts I don't know if you saw the clips, but I mentioned that, you know, it was definitely a learning experience. You know, I'm so used to being in Miami, being in that bubble. I get to, you know, the Northeast and it's freaking cold for one. You know, it's it's everything about Miami. I would say it's like the opposite. Miami, um, you know, big city, uh, stores Connecticut is like just a town. Like, I don't even know if it's a town. It's it's just stores, you know, it's just cows, uh, <laughs> endless, endless amounts of cows and sometimes even horses and barns and, you know, not too many buildings other than Yukon labeled buildings uh, versus in Miami, you know, you see it all, bro. You know, you can go to, you know, certain spots in Miami and it feels like you're in Puerto Rico on one corner, Mexico on the other and Cuba on the other. Like it's, you know, it's it's different. It's different, but but man, I, I like it here. I like it a lot. And yeah, because I, I mean, I think the cold is a 
a big factor to consider. And then, and then aside from that, like you said, the difference in city and, and like it, in just the, the people, the, uh, the community, the way that everyday life goes by for people, it's just very different. I'm sure. And I, I, I I don't know. I don't know if I would like it, if I wouldn't like it, I'd have to probably try it out. Um, I, I can see you in the Northeast. I mean, I mean, not not saying to live here forever, but I could definitely see you in the Northeast, bro. Like, like there are some places, uh, you know, for like New York, for example, really, really big city. Uh, you know, it kind of has a little bit for everyone, but you can drive, you know, three hours outside the city and be in, you know, God knows where in New York, like very rural, you know, cows and horses. So I would say like there are some places like the New York and even Boston that just it has a, a a little bit of something for everyone. Yeah. So your what's your what's your, what's your plan? You plan on staying there once you're done? Do you plan on going somewhere else? And, and like what are you what are you so, looking so at doing? Is to, is to be trained for the league and see where that takes me, bro. That that's my okay. plan. That's like plan A. You know that. And honestly, even more definite than that is just you know attacking the season, bro. You know we we have our first game. We play Utah State. Um, do you remember Pat? Pat Joyner. Joyner, yeah, yeah, bro. He plays for Utah State now. I actually, I sent him a little text today, just you know, messing with him, like, hey, you know, week one, bro. But um, yeah, bro, that that's kind of like my focus right now. You know, um, I guess you know, some people say you know, come up with backup plans and things like that. I just never really done that if that makes sense you know this is kind of like yeah it makes sense option a and then if option a doesn't work out then you know keep doing option a until it has to work out <laughs> yeah i mean that's good i it would would this be your last season and then this is my last okay prepare of, uh college this is my last time playing college football ever okay so so you're doing grad school right now correct correct i'm in the um the the business program here Okay, so you're doing an MBA? Correct. Okay, that's good. That'll help you always. Oh, a thousand percent. I mean, I hope so. I mean, it's what I did, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, like you said, having a plan B, my mom always tells me, you know, you got to have your plan B. And I, I'm hesitant because I'm like, no, but I don't want a plan B. I just want my plan A. Like, why would I, you know, look For to sure. make plan B? Sure. And, 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 and so it's good. it's good that you want, you know, you're 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 ambitious and you want to achieve what you what you put like yourself like whatever your goals are you want to achieve them and you work hard for it and um i think anyone that's really at that level they for the most part you know they're people that are ambitious in that in that sense and um that's good that thought that always takes you far and so you'll be you'll be you'll be finishing the season You'll yeah. be preparing for the combine and stuff like that. Yes, sir. That's cool. That's that's yes, nice, man. Yeah, I can't wait, bro. Like I said, it's a, it's the last season. You know, it's that little bit of nervousness. It's a little bit of anxiety, anxious. You know, um, but then there's a whole lot of joy. You know, just knowing, hey, like this, this is it. You know, this is like the last dance, the last ride for college. You know. Yeah. Is there? I'm not too sure, but but have you have has anyone told you like kind of where you stand and, and the difference you can make in this season as for like your draft stock and stuff like that? Or do you not get told about no, these no, things? No, I haven't, I haven't had any of those talks. You know? okay. just, I haven't even, you know, thought that far yet. It's just, Hey, like Utah state week one, you know, those that's, are the only, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You should take it. I mean, one day at a time, I just, it's, it's weird. Sometimes I see these, um, I guess these mock drafts for like the future year, like the future mm -hmm. draft. And it's like, oh, these people are projected for rounds one, two, and three or whatever. And I don't yeah. know if those people are told something or if, you know, how it works. That's why I was asking. Bro, bro, you say it all the time, man. And I think that's another reason why you kind of have to take it one day, one game at a time. You know, just looking at last year's, uh, you know, draft. You know, there, there were some couple of mock drafts that had, you know, three, maybe four quarterbacks going late, late in the first round. And uh, Kenny Pickett ended up being what I think the only quarterback drafted this past uh, draft class. 
you know, you had the kid from Liberty, uh, Malik, you know, some people were saying, oh, he's like the clear cut number one quarterback of this class. But, you know, Pittsburgh didn't think that. So, um, again, uh, I don't know what some players are told or, or what they're not told. But for me, it's just, you know, one game, one week at a time, brother. Yeah, that's how it should be done, man. That's yeah. that's good. That's good to hear. I mean, yeah, keep it, keep, keep your head down and working and, you know, it'll pay off. It always does when you put in the necessary amount of work. I believe that, bro. Uh, something that, you know, my, my, my grandma and my mom and my, you know, grandma and grandfather always told me is, you know, no hard work uh, leads in vain, you know, whether, you know, you're, you're planting corn and, you know, you're working really hard at that. You may not see the corn. And corn may never come, but that same skill that you use when it came to growing and harvesting corn, you can apply to anything else. And, you know, that's what I say that, you know, hard work doesn't lead in vain. You know, it doesn't guarantee success, but without hard work, I think you, you guarantee not having a chance for success, if that makes sense. It hardens you, whether it be for that particular skill, like you said, or for something else, it just, it builds you up, builds up your character and, in some way or another, it benefits you. So I'm 100% agreeing with that. Yeah, bro. A thousand percent, man. A thousand yeah. percent. Well, Rob, I mean, I think I think that's a good way to wrap it up then. Way to finish off, finishing off on that good note. I know that you want to, I know that your girlfriend is in town and I'm sure you want to spend some time with her and she wants to spend I, some time with you. I do, man. Or, or, or she's going to come join the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way. <laughs> Yes, sir, man. Well, well bro, I, I want to say thank you for having me on, bro. I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad that you're doing this. You know, I'm proud of you, bro. And, and continue to do it, man. And uh, make YouTube videos, bro. Don't, don't, do not not make YouTube videos. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah. I, I know just the audio could probably be a little easier or whatnot, but bro, I'm telling you, you YouTube is the way. Yeah, the, the, the easiest road is not the best road a lot of the time. Yeah, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, well, but, bro, um, I, I, wanna, I, I wanna have you on the show, bro. Yeah. Bro, just let me know when. Okay, bro. Okay. And we I, will, and I, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, bro. See you, bro. Yeah. Do you um do you wanna shout anything out for your podcast where people can find you? Anything that you want to say? For sure. Um, if you guys want to come find me, uh just as long as it's not with the you know the government, uh you can come to my Instagram at it's Robert Burns. Um, you know, that's where I kind of post some of the clips for our show. You, you kind of see what's going on with me as far as, you know, football. And, you know, every now and then I have my, my family and my girlfriend in there too as well. And also, uh, you know, for anyone following, um, I'm a part of a startup called Invicta. And we help, you know, produce content for people that just want to, you know, work on themselves. You know, it's a self-development platform. Um, you know, we've recently partnered with, you know, some of the football players at, you know, the University of Connecticut, and we're always looking for other people to come and join and, you know, just join the Invicta way. Hey, sounds awesome. I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure people will want to check that out. Sounds interesting. Absolutely, bro. All right, Rob. Well, thank you, man. And, and uh, thank you for being here. And we'll, I'll talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.